Welcome back to the long-awaited third installment in my devlog series. Just kidding, nobody actually really cares. But this week, I did make some major updates. I finally started working on chapter two, and I also started working on train level. Chapter one right now is definitely far from done because I think the levels themselves are boring, and the levels don't really fit in with the story much. So I recruited some of my friends to help out with the story, and we're going to plan out each level and introduce like some mechanics so that the player can learn the game instead of just having like this crappy tutorial level because that's not cool. We have it all in this Google Doc, and this is all we've done for the entire week because we're procrastinators. But now some slightly more interesting updates. Uh, first of all, I got some feedback from my playtesters, and they said Chad was too hard, so I made him fit so he's easier to shoot, but I kept the shoot range the same, or else it'd be too easy, and I also made his rockets kill on one hit. This isn't too much of a buff or a nerf for Chad, because when you shoot the rockets, he also takes some damage from the rockets, so I think you could use that to your advantage, and so I think a boss battle for level 1 is complete unless my playtesters keep complaining, in which case I'll have to please them. After making Chad better again, because that seems to be the only things I've done for the past few weeks, I finally got to work on buildings for Chapter 2. I based my designs off of this guy's pixel art buildings that I found on DeviantArt, and I mean, I wouldn't trace them because that's mean and I'm pretty sure that's illegal, and I can't trace them because when I downsize them in Photoshop, they look horrible. So, I might as well just base my designs off of them. So what I'm planning for chapter two's levels is to have a bunch of buildings and you can hop on each of the stories. Each story serves as maybe a platform for each of the enemies and you can hop from building to building and fight enemies that are standing on the building. Anyway, I went ahead and built these buildings and made them prefabs to build a bunch of levels. Or actually, I only built one, but now they're in Unity and I think it plays pretty well. The only problem so far is that the buildings are kind of big, but I think that's the only scale because the player is as tall as the door, and that's supposed to be the correct size. So I might add some stairs or like bouncy tires to bounce the player onto there. After that, I made some transitions for my game. I, I did this by following a tutorial by Brackies called Making Scene Transitions, and I think it's pretty cool. For now, it's just a crossfade that says John Whack and then loading, but I want to make a smoother transition in the future because I don't want levels to feel disconnected. I want it to all feel like a one cohesive underground layer because that's what it's supposed to be, right? In the future, I'm planning on having an elevator that transitions to like a background where you can't really see the difference and you can't see it going up, which in my case is just going to be a solid color. Another transition I wanted to add is between chapter 1 and chapter 2. It doesn't really make sense that you take a can of beans and suddenly you're in like a city, so I added a train level. After chapter 1, after you kill Chad, right, there's an elevator and that will take you to a subway, and then in the subway you take a train and that train leads to a train fight, and you have to survive for 30 seconds against a bunch of enemies. The way I did this was making some upgrades to the item spawner script. I also made some upgrades to the game manager script, but the upgrades I made to the item spawner script were pretty minor. I just made it detect whether the player was far enough away, and if it was, then you spawn an object, or in this case an enemy, farther away from him. After this, uh, the game manager updates. For the game manager, I made a new enumerator called win condition. 
and basically you tell the game manager what type of level it's going to begin, how you win. The regular ones where you get to the beans is a checkpoint level. Another one is a kill all level where you just kill all the enemies or maybe you just kill a certain amount of enemies. I haven't used that level type yet, but maybe I will. The last kind is a time limit where you just survive for a certain time without dying. And that's going to be the train level. After this, I finally started working more on the train. I first drew them in Photoshop by taking a reference image of some trains in New York because I'm basing the overworld on New York, even though Chapter 2 doesn't really look like New York much. Anyway, I drew these trains, put them into Unity, and I started building the train scene. First, I made some speed lines to make the illusion of going fast by using Unity's particle system. After this, I added colliders to all of the trains so you can walk on top of them and not fall off. Then I made the background a loop, and instead of using like a regular parallax script, I just made an animation clip to make it go back and forth, loop that animation clip, and now it looks like the background is moving, which is pretty cool. After this, I got pretty bored, so I just went back and worked on the overworld. I drew the thug enemy in Photoshop by following the same process I did. So basically, I just replaced the character faces from the original character PSB file, and then I imported that into Unity. I also needed to give them some run functionality, so I just made a script for that and called it Runner Enemy. It inherits from the generic enemy class, so it can do all the damage and stuff, and all it really has is the running stuff. And then I gave him some of the gun enemy functionality by just adding a completely new shoot function because it would be messy to also inherit from the gun enemy, and then it'd be like sub-inheritance, and I don't really know how inheritance works that well, so yeah. There are now thug enemies that are basically mini chads who chase you around and shoot you with pistols, or they just chase you, I guess, with a knife. I'm not sure. After this, I put some of the music that Anthony did, the procrastinator from last episode, into the game. His main menu music is actually really, really, really sick because like it starts off jazzy and nice and calm or like just cool. And then it goes into like full metal mode and like the way he does that transition with the drum buildup is really cool. So, and he said that was the main menu music, so I put it on the main menu, and yeah, it's pretty sick. And then I also made some music fades in and out, so during scene transitions, it doesn't just like cut out and then it plays again. So, that's what I did. So yeah, the main menu's fixed up, and then I went to the end screen and then added the same credits, and then I just made it scroll because it's like the end of movies. I do want to have it be somewhat interactable, like maybe you can shoot the names if you feel like it. And then you could maybe get money from those. I do want to build a currency system into the game where you can buy guns maybe or buy power-ups or just buy clothes for John Wack, but that's maybe for a later day. Thanks for watching and I really hope you enjoyed this video. I've spent a very long time making all of these things, and if you liked it, please like and subscribe if you feel like it. If you didn't like it, please let me know how I can improve because I'm trying to do my best here. And that's it. See ya. Thanks for watching.